Welcome along guys. Well, I'm out on the final BMW ride. This bike goes back to BMW on Monday. I've had this for two weeks. This is the last day we've actually got some sunny weather forecast before the, the weather changes and the rain comes in. We've just done our comparison review between this S1000 RR and the new Aprilia RS3411 factory. I scored this as my favourite out of the two. Well, whether the scores were in the favourite, but certainly I would have chosen this over the RS V4. This is amazing. Yeah. But I think I think I would take the BMW. Right. I just wanted to bring this out and explain to you why I think this is the ultimate sports bike for the road. Let's get out and enjoy that weather. Roll the intro! So at the moment I've just been playing on this. <laughs> I've come out to do this video, almost didn't record this video, because I, I was just enjoying riding around and I thought, oh, no, what, should I just go home? I'm just gonna cruise around and not even do the video. And I thought, but the weather's meant to be turning and then I'm not gonna let you guys know just what I really feel about this bike. And I, I had to come out and tell you what my thought about this. So this is my ultimate road sports bike. It's incredible. I mean, I, I've just been playing around. This bike has also got the the uh, the pro race mode. So I've just gone into the pro race modes just to have a little look at them. So yeah, I'm in the track modes now. It's got three track modes, this bike, where you can fully customize three different maps to your liking. Anti-wheelie, suspension, throttle control, all independently. And it actually wakes up these DTC buttons on the switch gear here and you can adjust how much uh, traction control you want manually. So I mean, this has got all of that, those pro race options on this bike, but that's not why I love it. Let's get it out of those race modes and let's bang it in to comfortable old road mode. Settings, race track mode, off. There you go, we're back in good old, good old road modes. Let's go dynamic, let's go road, because it's just so damn comfortable. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> Still no sound. You were probably all screaming at the screen when we did our comparison with Greg and I said I'd rather have this than an RSV4 1100 factory. I can't believe it. I'm so surprised. I love the RSV4. I love the Tuonos. I love that motor. I love everything about that bike. But as a road proposition, it does not come close, in my view, to this. This is the ultimate sports tourer. Yeah, sports tourer. This, this can turn from a, a focused track machine to a comfortable sports tourer on the fly with the press of a button. And that is why I love this thing. I mean, I'm in road mode now. The suspension, this, this electronic suspension is so good on the latest BMWs. Yeah, okay, you may not get quite as much feedback from the road as you do with the Olin system. It's very close, but maybe just not quite as much. But what you do get is twice as much comfort than the Olin system. This is the road mode, so you know, it, it still lets you feel the texture of the tarmac, but it dials it all back a little bit. You hit a pothole and you can feel the bike, you know, almost sort of wallow a little bit, you know, in a good way, in a comfortable way. You're obviously not going to want that when you're in sports mode, but it, it softens it all up so much for the road that it makes it an absolute joy. It also softens the throttle response off a little bit. It's still got bags of power, but it's just dialed back a little bit to make it easy. And that is what I love it. When you've got it in the, when I first test rode this bike, I have done another, an hour's, I did a first ride on this bike last year when it first came out. Just a quick thrash for an hour. And you know, and I was, it was hard to hold yourself back. It was one of those bikes where you think, could I actually control myself on this? But put it in road mode 
it softens the whole thing back so much that you don't feel like you have to go fast and you can literally just dial everything back and just start to enjoy just being out and just riding and that is what I love things like the RSV4 they're all too focused on going fast and brilliant on track but that doesn't always work as a road bike also on the BMW you've got so many creature comforts cruise control which is so easy to use you know I just leave it turned on all the time and then just go set bang you know it's on and because this is a sports bike you really need the cruise control just to give I mean that the bars are quite close to you there's not a massive amount of weight on the wrists I'd say it's about the same as the Brutale I rode the other week maybe even a bit more comfortable than Brutale because I had the really very very hard Olin's EC2 suspension which made it really uncomfortable this is way more comfortable than that naked Brutale way more comfortable and of course you've got the fairing for the wind protection so bang the cruise control on rest your wrist a little bit sit up even you know the bike is so light this is the M Sport version so this has all the carbon wheels it's so light I mean you can steer it really with the seat of your ass <laughs> you don't need to touch the bars it is incredible the dashboard is just so nice on this BMW so clear what I also love about them is when the bike is cold the actual red line starts at 6,000 revs so you, you, you can't exceed the red line when the bike's cold and it slowly goes up as the bike warms up the red line goes up lovely little feature if anything I think that goes up a bit quickly because I think really you need to do at least 15 minutes on a bike before you start ragging it I think it takes 15 minutes to warm that oil up properly so I'd even like to see that stay that red line stay down for longer so people know really how long they have to warm their bikes up for before they can can open them up because I think that goes up a bit too quick but it's just little things like that little little you know that that stuff that oh go on then go on I don't care go on off you go I'm quite happy just poodling but it's stuff like that which makes a fantastic robot little things that they thought about that the Germans have thought about it and they've included stuff like that yeah okay you know and in our comparison we, we, we spoke about quality yeah it's got a bit of plastic on it you know it's not as premium the finish as some of the Italian bikes but it's the little things that the Germans are so very very good at those little details and that is what makes this an absolute pleasure on the road go to the sports setting and then we have the fantastic sports dash with lean angles and what it does it remembers the lean every time you turn the bike on and off it resets the maximum lean angle so you know how much lean angle you've done on the particular ride you've just been on since the bike's been running and if you have the BMW app all of that information is recorded on the app so you can go back and look turn by turn overlaid on the GPS map of what lean angles and stuff you were getting around each of the bends <laughs> imagine that on track I mean that is you know that's almost world superbike levels of data being recorded that you can review and see well on that corner I could be giving it a bit more lean I mean what what, what is this bike is it a, is it a race bike is it a road bike no it's both I'm gonna try and connect my phone to this because I want to look at all the the extras which I haven't looked at yet like the navigation and see what you know the app as I mentioned I've got it on my phone so let me connect it and I want to see <laughs> all that turn by turn stuff oh surprise surprise someone's been fly tipping searching for pairs Galaxy J6 that's me pair with that yes please accept we're in allow so we're paired how good is that and if we go into the app what color is your vehicle yeah M Sport. there we are s1000 double r service is due in 7000 kilometers information about the bike my tire pressures are 2.5 bar at the front 2.9 bar at the back beautiful <sighs> get off get off pissing glove now oh sorry sorry i just kicked you in the face right i'm sick of looking at rubbish let's go what it will now do if i've had the 
the map downloaded, I could have seen what the what the uh, what the speed limit is on the road I was riding. It would tell you what the speed limit is on the road you're riding. How good is that? Because I don't have the map downloaded, it's what normally goes in that box. It would tell me 60 down here, so you know what the speed limit is. Amazing! It's little things like that which make a good road bike. This is, this is this, that's why this bike is so damn good. There's some nice twisties coming up, so I'm going to bang it into dynamic, adjust suspension, adjust throttle response in you know one hit. You haven't got to then go and do the suspension. No, it adjusts it all in one hit. And also when you're in road mode, there's no you know you don't have to then think what traction control you want. It's just done for you. You don't think, well, I want level three traction, I want level eight traction. No, in road mode, it works all that out. It knows you want traction control. It just sorts it out for you. And you haven't got to worry about what number you're on. You know, it just does it all. Which I like, it's less faffage. I mean, if you've got traction control, you've got traction control level. Why does it need to know how much wheel spin you want when you're on the road? I don't want any wheel spin. Sort it out. I don't have to tell you what level of traction I want, just I want all traction on. So that's the beauty of the dynamic, it just sorts all that out. Same with the wheelie control. You know, you, if you want all the adjustable wheelie control, then go into the pro modes, which are for the track. You don't need to worry about all that for the road. If you did want to do some wheelies, then you've got one button here, which just press of it, it turns off the traction control completely. One press the button, on its own button. So if you did want to prop some wheelies or turn the traction off, push of that. Pop it in dynamic when you do come for a, a couple of twisties. Quick shift and blipper is also incredible. As I say, the bike is just telepathic. There's the handling. It's so stable as well. Oh, you know, so confidence inspiring. I love this thing. I really thought my sports bike days were over really. I mean this bike for me is what the H2 should be from a, in ease of use, from, from a sort of sports touring sort of point of view. The H2 is a big heavy bike. It's never going to be a good track bike. Never. So make it the ultimate road bike. Make it as usable as this. For the road. What is this thing doing? Come on, sir. What are you doing? Right, oh, there's some big old bumps up here, so I'm going to go back into road mode. I mean, to be honest, the road mode, nine times out of ten, is good enough. When you want to go sporty as well, you know, it's it's not <laughs> there they are. There they are. Didn't jar me, it handled it, it didn't use all the travel of the suspension which it does on most bikes. Beautiful. Yeah, the road mode is still okay. You, you know, you, you can still chuck it around in road mode, so it's not like well now I've got to switch between road and right. No, you can just leave it in road, and nine times out of ten, that'll be more than enough for what you want to be doing on the road. Hence now, this is road mode. Just makes those same set of bends a lot easier on your spine. I think if you're a little bit older, but you still really want the sports bike, this is the one to try. This is, I'll say the old man sports bike, but <laughs> it's comfortable enough to be. Yeah, it may not have some of those premium bits on it like the Brembo's, you know, the Stylemas, the Olin's. It may have equipment which is developed by BMW. And I think that is that is why this bike is so good. Because it's got that BMW developed equipment. If they were chucking on Brembo's, they're, they're limited to the performance that the Brembo decide the bike should have. You know, this, this is why they've come out with their own. I know it's Marzocchi suspension, but I think that's because they've been working very closely with Marzocchi 
to make them design a system which works on their bikes and how they want it to work rather than with the Olins. I mean, I, I've tried a lot of bikes with the Olins EC2, EC2 suspension and it works more or less the same on all of them. The feel from those bikes with that suspension on is, is sort of the, the same across the board. It's how that suspension feels. Perhaps BMW didn't want that. They wanted to work with Marzocchi and get them to design a system which worked how they wanted it to work. Had that range of travel and adjustment that they wanted on their road bikes. <laughs> and it's just worked so well. It's just worked so well and it's what makes this bike so great I think. That BMW have done everything and had their finger in everything about this bike. It's a masterpiece of engineering and that is what the Germans do incredibly well. Coming to a 30, bang the cruise on. If you can't control yourself, let the bike control you instead. Put the cruise on, just poodle through. <laughs> I don't recommend not holding on. If I come to a junction, I always cover the brake in case someone pulls out, etc. But it's just so nice to, to rest your wrists. We go right here, touch the brake or close the throttle and the cruise control is deactivated. So nice. A really bumpy bit of road, this. <laughs> Laps it up. I mean, it's not crashy. Obviously, it's bumpy. You, you, the bike's got to ride over the bumps. That's what suspension you've got. But it doesn't crash over the bumps. It doesn't jar you. It's an incredible system. And like I say, if you are a little bit older and you don't want to give up your sports bikes, but you're finding the position really uncomfortable on them, you're finding, you know, the suspension is jarring your bad backs and everything. Try one of these. Honestly, it is, it is a sports tourer in the road mode. The riding position on this bike, yeah, it's quite a compact bike. I'm six foot two, 18 stone, I'm a big guy. I'm not really small sports bike shaped. I do look a little bit big on them, but the actual comfort of this is incredibly good. The foot pegs are low. The old generation S1000, the foot pegs were probably a good two inches higher than this. I can, I, you know, when I, when I used to get on the old bike, I'd have to get on it and then you lift to put your feet on the pegs and you realise you're not even close and you've got to go, oh, and you've got to lift them all the way up. It's not like that at all. You just get on it and you put your feet on the pegs. No dramas for the older gentleman. <laughs> The bars are really close to you, so you're only you're only halfway length forward, I would say. You're not right in that racing tuck. You've only got a, a very gen gentle amount of weight on the wrists anyway. And with the fact you can put the cruise control on just to alleviate any, any weight, it's perfect. It's just very, very comfortable. All the ergos work lovely, all the brake levers, the rear brake is also right where you want it. The bike's even pretty thin. It's not a wide bike. For a straight four, it's incredibly thin. You tuck your knee, you know, you, your knees are really, you're not spread, you're not, you're not got your knees sticking out like Kermit on it. You're, you're tucked in, you're not gonna, it's not gonna hurt your hips if you're a little bit older. Oh, it is, uh, it is the older gentleman's choice for a sports bike. Before you go out and get your, your H2 SXs and your, your XRs and all of those other sports touring machines try one of these in the road mode I think you will be very very surprised at how flexible how usable this bike is on the road well there we go guys I hope that sort of explained why I chose this bike over the RSV4 I mean I, I, it surprised me how good this was you know, I've said in the past, I don't even like straight four engines. <laughs> give me a V-twin, give me a V-4. Well, I had a choice, the V-4 or this. And I chose this just because of that practicality for use on the UK roads. But there we are. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate your support if always, as always. If you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button, click that bell, and then you'll be notified of every video I upload. 
I'm really uh, thankful for all my subscribers, everyone who's viewing my channel. I mean, it, it, the channel's doing really well at the moment, and that's because of you guys. And I really appreciate your viewing support. I really do. And, th and thanks for what, because without you watching, you know, I wouldn't be getting these opportunities to ride these bikes. So I'm incredibly thankful for all the subscribers. So massive thanks, guys. Keep safe, keep riding, and enjoy yourselves. Speak to you later on. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to me. Never mind getting beat up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh, oh,